Hello and welcome to the Shoe Who Science Show, where in this video I'm going to discuss some new information about two different companies that are currently developing cell therapies for treatment for COVID-19. And so these two companies are Pluristem Therapeutics and Aphesis. So I recently watched a webinar just the other day that was produced by the Alliance for Regenerative Medicine and they had speakers from both Pluristem and Aphesis talk about their current work. And so the video is available on YouTube, but it's about an hour long. So in this video, I just plan to summarize the key points and take home messages from the talk. So as I mentioned, both of these companies are developing cell therapy treatments. And so what effectively this means are therapies in which viable cells are injected, grafted or implanted into a patient. So Athesis and Pluristem Therapeutics are not the only two companies developing cell therapy treatments but they were the two on the webinar and so they're the ones I'm going to talk about and so both of these companies are now trying to use their products to try and reduce and alleviate the symptoms that are associated with patients with COVID-19 so in particular this includes acute respiratory distress syndrome otherwise known as ARDS but also potentially the other complications such as the acute kidney injury and gastrointestinal injury seen in some patients. And so I think around a month ago now I made a video about this in terms of Aphesis and so I'll just reiterate a couple of points that I said then about the company. So Aphesis is a biotechnology company that is focusing on regenerative medicine which is the process of repairing, engineering or regenerating human or animal tissues or organs to be able to get back the initial function of that tissue. So before this outbreak even occurred, Athesis were using their own product, which they called Multistem, to investigate its properties and being able to prevent the symptoms of ARDS. And so this Multistem product that I'm talking about is their own product that they've developed, which are effectively is a stem cell product. And so stem cells are cells that have the, the capability to regenerate and generate more cells, but also the ability to divide and differentiate. And so they initially took these cells from healthy adult, adult bone marrow. And because they have this capability to divide, they can then expand them outside of the human body and produce more of them. And so there's no genetic manipulations, but these cells that they've expanded, they can then freeze for then thawing for when they're needed in therapies. And then the really cool thing about these multi-stems is that these multi-stem cells is that they don't need blood or tissue type matching, which is actually a really severe limitation of transplants. So the development of this product could therefore be widely available to multiple patients of need. And the way that they deliver these cells is intravenously. So Eric Jenkins was speaking on behalf of Aphesis during this webinar, and he went into a bit more detail about their Macovia trial, which stands for Multi-Stem Administration for COVID-19 Induced ARDS. And so this is a phase two, three trial that they have FDA approval for whereby they want to get 400 subjects and do a double blind random placebo trial and after 28 days of given these multi stems they want to do a primary clinical assessment and then obviously they would do a 12 month follow up to assess the quality of life and health of the patients. So the one thing I didn't really talk about in the previous video I did about Athesis was how these multi-stem cells are actually going to be able to achieve this and to alleviate the symptoms and increase recovery of the patients. And so described in this webinar, Eric talks about the multiple ways that multi-stem cells effectively modulate the immune system. And so don't worry if you didn't understand those different cells I've talked about there. But the key point is, is from their in vitro studies and other data, they generally see by having these multi-stem cells, they see a reduction in pro-inflammatory factors such as interleukin-6 and 8 and interleukin-1 beta, and an increase with interleukin-10, TGF beta and interleukin-4. And so what they propose the effect of this is, is to tip the balance of the immune system from a hypo-inflammatory state to a tolerogenic one. So the really key point to understand is that these multi-stem cells actually secrete factors into the surrounding tissue and into the blood system. 
and these different factors have hopefully the potential to regulate the immune system to be able to protect damaged and injured cells to be able to promote tissue repair and healing and then after this has happened over time these cells are going to be cleared from the body so kind of what makes these cell therapies very different to the taking of drugs is that they're secreting a whole bunch of factors that could have a diverse and even more effective um, response than just taking one compound. So what about Pluristem? So Pluristem is a leading regenerative medicine company that are developing novel placenta-based cell therapy products. So unlike Athesis that took them from bone marrow, the Pluristem company is using placental expanded cells, hence the name of their product which they call PLX. And so as guessed by the name, they are derived from the placenta. And similarly to the multi-stem cells, they are mesenchymal-like stromal cells, but they have the same stem cell capability. And so these cells are taken from the placenta, which is known to protect and sustain the developing fetus. And it also protects the fetus from attack from the mother's immune response and also from infection. And so the idea is kind of like the same effect's got to happen, right? They want to be able to prevent an immune response, which is the idea behind dampening the response to COVID-19, which is thought to cause ARDS. And so because these cells have the stem cell-like properties, they can be taken from donated placenta and then cultured in what they have their own technology to replicate and produce tons of these PLX cells. So they can manufacture them in large numbers and then they can take the cell product and freeze them and thaw them for when they're needed. And also similarly to Athesis, they have lots of data that shows that these cells have immunomodulatory properties such that they can induce the regulatory T cells and the M2 macrophages. And the bottom line to this is that hopefully it can prevent or reverse the dangerous overactivation of the immune system that is seen in particular with severe cases of COVID-19. But the key difference between this product and Athesis is instead of it being intravenously injected, these cells are provided intramuscularly. So if you go onto the website of either of these companies, you'll find probably a lot more information and nicer diagrams than my own scribbly writing. But I took this image from the Pluristem website. And so you can see that they have this intramuscular injection of these Pluristem cells. And again, due to these secreted factors that are listed here, the idea is it has a systemic impact on the body which hopefully could alleviate the symptoms that occur through in COVID-19 patients. So similarly to Athesis, they also now have FDA approval to do a phase two trial in COVID-19 patients, but they have already used their PLX cells in a smoke, small cohort of patients. And so this was a total of 18 patients and so far they have data from eight of them after a 28 day follow up. And so 87.5% was the survival rate with 75% of the patients no longer needing any mechanical ventilation. And so in this new trial, they're now going to evaluate the efficacy and safety of one or two intramuscular injections in three different dosages of these PLX cells for the treatment of ARDS resulting from COVID-19. But yeah, key to both of these companies obviously is the safety and the tolerability and the kind of goals is to be able to increase the number of days free from the intensive care units and the days free from the use of ventilators and hopefully from a one year follow up to see an improved quality of life. And so kind of the main question or the thing that most people are interested in is when. When are we going to be able to start seeing some of these therapies actually being used for a wide variety of patients? And the problem is it very much depends on how the trials go. And so both of these companies are in the recruitment stage and obviously it therefore depends on the success of these trials and also depends on how these companies, if they are effective, will be able to scale up their products such that it could be applied to multiple patients. But as I said, I mean, it's very interesting for these 
to understand these therapies and obviously both of them were initially designed to treat other diseases and so it's kind of exciting that this push to further develop and refine these treatments are being done but hopefully yeah we'll see some success and hopefully it will help a lot of patients out who are struggling and suffering with COVID-19. So hopefully you've learned something and as always thanks for listening.